One of my favorite things about the DS era of Pokemon was how easy it was to get your old Pokemon back from Generation 3. And Generation 3 had a lot to choose from. Grabbing Generation 1 and 3 Pokemon to your DS systems that contain Generations 2 and 4. It really was the best time to be a Pokemon fan. It's certainly better than a subscription package and whatever the hell Generation 8 did. And that's what we're doing today. Pokemon Migration. For those of you that grew up in the DS generation, it was the way of getting your Pokemon from GBA titles all the way to your Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, Heart Gold, and Soul Silver games. And now, with modern emulation, it's a lot easier to do than you'd think. Before we start off, we just need a few things. On the Game Boy Advance side, you will need a Pokemon Generation 3 ROM. Any of these five will do. You will need a save file, which should automatically show up once you save your game and a Game Boy Advance emulator, preferably Visual Boy Advance, though I hear some versions of MGBA work pretty well as well. And on the DS side, you are going to need a Pokemon Generation 4 ROM, any of these five work, a save file that allows you to get to the PAL Park, and Melon DS emulator. I am unsure if Desmume does a similar thing, but we're going to be focusing on Melon DS. So with that said, let's get started. We're going to start with Leaf Green version. There we are. We have at least six Pokemon. You need at least six in order for the migration to actually work. And we're going to pause it here for a test comparison. Okay, so from here, we are going to go to File. And we're going to look for Insert ROM Cart. We're going to be putting in Leaf Green. And we'll boot up Pokemon Platinum on the DS side. If everything loaded right, you should see Migrate from Leaf Green. Okay, so let's make sure we got this right. And you can see the exact same Pokemon. Choose your six. And these six Pokemon will migrate. Keep in mind, once you migrate them, they cannot be returned to the Game Boy Advance. But, here's the thing! See this? These are my files. And what's this? Copy and pasting. <laughs> I've cheated the system. So yes, you can, <laughs> you can get infinite mons. You can get infinite of the same mons and keep your save data intact in the Game Boy Advance version. I love emulation. And now we'll participate in Pal Park just to prove that it works. Working so far. And there's one of our, there's a Nidoran, female. <laughs> Very creative and original names I had here. All right, let's skip ahead to the end. Okay, now we caught them all. There they all are. Everything works fine. Okay, so now for this one, we're going to be trying out a different game, and we will be trying out a different uh, GBA ROM with it. I always liked Heart Gold, because you could always use the touchscreen for so many other things. Now, as you see, we don't have any GBA carts in here, but this time, we're going to be using uh, Ruby Sapphire Emerald. Now a common issue when using the dual slot feature is with the Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald titles. These three games have a real-time clock feature, which can add a few kilobytes to your save file and interfere with the migration process. Depending on your emulator, it may add a few bytes of information to account for the real-time clock feature. These bits of data can confuse the emulator. While it's recommended to use an emulator that uses 128 kilobytes of save data, there is a relatively easy way to remove the clock's data from your save file. Now, while I couldn't get a live instance of this troubleshooting issue, this has happened to me in the past when I played Emerald version. Uh, right here, we have an example of two different save files having two different kilobyte counts on disk. And I'll be showing you how to remove those little bits of data using a hex editor. So we'll go to Google and uh, find a hex editor online. I'm using hexed.it. And uh, we'll find uh, an example file of a uh, Ruby version for this example. And you'll see that there's a lot of data there. Lots and lots of data. 
And we're going to scroll all the way down to the end to uh, 20,000. You'll see all this data right here. And what we're going to do is click on all that data. Let's do a shift click. And uh, I believe right clicking should just give you a bit of options. And uh, we're going to choose the option delete. Get rid of all that. And then we save it. We save that file as a copy. And there we go. Now, once you rename it into the old file and replace the old one, your MelonDS emulator should be able to recognize the save file once you put in the game. And the migrate option should be able to show up. And I believe that's everything. Uh, my name is Vince. Hopefully this was helpful to you. And I'll see you in the next one, if there is a next one, later.